In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your Stealth Burner logo from this to this or this by using the Rainbow Barf LED by Vinnie Cordiero and Whopping Pockard along with Julian Schill's port of the LED Effects Library. Let's take a look at how to do this. It's pretty easy. First step is to go to West 3D and order yourself one of the Rainbow LEDs. This is a small circuit board with eight RGB LEDs that gets wired just like any other NeoPixel. Next, go to Whopping Pockard's GitHub repository and download the files for the two pieces that you're going to need. First is the diffuser that you will have to print out of a clear material. This is different from the stock Stealth Burner diffuser. You can see it has eight light wells bring light forward from the LEDs before they mix. You'll also need the new LED carrier because the rainbow PCB is a little bit bigger than a stock NeoPixel. After you remove the support, you're able to do your installation. You'll want to trim the PCB to go as flush to, this, to the edge as you can being very careful not to damage the circuit board itself. Once you have all your parts assembled, you can go ahead and wire the LED into your NeoPixel chain following the instructions on Whopping Pockard's GitHub repository. The diffuser fits into the stock mask, which I've already put into my stealth burner. So I can just drop the diffuser in, you get a dental pick. So it's kind of hard to see, but I'm just seating the diffuser into the mask. Of course, it's going to be tricky. There we go. So now you can see the diffuser is in place. And again, looking for the index on the carrier which is right here in this spot. We're going to match that up with the LED and you want the wires to be routed out of, oh, come on. The wires be routed through that hole in the back like this. There we go. And with the LED seated, you just want to turn it, put it into the LED chamber. Diffuser was not completely flat. There we go. Everything is snug. And now I can drop my hot end fan back in place. Tidy up these wires a little bit. Come back inside the keeper so that nothing snags. And with that, physical installation is done. 
And now, once I reinstall the fan shroud, we're ready to move on to software. First, you should go to Julian Schill's GitHub repository and follow the instructions to install the LED effect software. This will also put an entry in your Moonraker configuration, so you'll be notified if the LED effect software is updated. Next, let's take a look at the configuration for the Stealth Burner LEDs. I'm starting from a stock configuration file. The only thing I've done is to update the pin so that there's not any errors. Working through this configuration is our first step, and then we'll get to actually adding in all of the pretty effects. First thing that we need to look at is the chain count. This is the number of LEDs that are actually in the chain itself, which stock is set to three because you would have your logo LED and then your two nozzle LEDs. However, the rainbow LED is actually eight LEDs connected. So our new chain count is going to be 10. So that's eight in the logo and then two in the nozzle. Next, we have to look at color order. And the stock NeoPixels are usually GRBW because they're an RGB and white. However, to intermix the RGBW and the RGB, which is what the LEDs and the rainbow are, we have to individually set those orders. So we say GRB, which is the correct color order for each NeoPixel LED. And then we actually need eight definitions. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we're also going to individually define the two nozzle LEDs. The initial color settings here uh, you can change those if you want. That's just the default setup for the LEDs when they power up. And as we scroll, scroll through, take a look at our LED definitions themselves. So for the SB LEDs, where that currently is indexed as one, we need to add the rest of the LEDs. The software uses the index to determine how to structure the data that's being sent. So we have to tell it that the SB LEDs logo index is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then also in that SB LEDs chain, we have a subsection which is the nozzle, and that is going to be nine and 10. So again, you have your chain of LEDs and then we can define sections within the chain. So we're saying that the logo is LEDs one through eight and the nozzle is nine and 10. And for the moment, that should be good. So I can, I'm going to save and close and do a firmware restart. And now that I've done the firmware restart, you can see that I have the violet logo, which is the startup color that I set. And let's go back. Well, let me go to the dashboard console. So if I say status printing, Now I have my red and let's see what some of the other statuses are that we can do. So now we have the logo working like it normally would with a standard NeoPixel, which is not very much fun, but let's see what it's going to take to get some of the more advanced effects going here. I'm going to start with the fire effect for the logo. I'm just going to go to the bottom of the configuration and 
going to paste in from my other configuration, but we'll talk through this. So you have to set, just like you would have a G-code definition, we're doing an LED effect definition. I'm calling it logo fire. Then we have the LED section where we define what LEDs we want this logo fire effect to be on. So I'm saying NeoPixel, my SB LEDs. Then we're going to add in the layer that actually tells the software what you want it to display, what effect you want. So I'm going to say that we're doing the fire layer. You can actually go in and overlay several layers on top of each other, which is outside what I'm going to get into today. But this is just a, a basic idea of how to start working with the effect. There are other tutorials that will get way into the nitty gritty of creating these effects. So what I'm doing is saying we're adding the fire effect. Uh, it's an additive effect. And these are the color indexes. So we want to go from nothing to just some red here, some red and blue. We're going through some color changes there. And then the rest of the definition that we need, which is you have to say that this effect auto start is false. Otherwise it would start running as soon as the controller boots. You can set the frame rate. If you begin to have problems with this bogging down uh, your controller Pi, uh, if you're running on a, on a lower powered uh, controller, you can drop this down to 18 frames a second or even 12 frames a second. Uh, run on error is currently not enabled, but eventually, hopefully it will be, so that if your MCU or Clipper has a fault, it will automatically run an effect for you. So now I have the logo fire effect defined, but there's no way to call it. So what we have to do is decide where we want that to happen. And I normally put mine in the status heating macro. So right now when you set the status to heating, the software is looking back at this array of colors here in heating and it's sending those values as static colors to your leds it's building the colors for the logo then it's building the colors for the nozzle and then once transmit equals one it actually sends that what i'm going to do is i'm going to comment these out And now I'm going to put in a different piece of code. Clean this up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is come here and say, set LED effect equal logo underscore fire. Okay, so I made a mistake with my syntax. So here, set LED effect, effect equal logo fire. We'll save and restart. Go to the dashboard. There we go. So now I've got this running and how do I stop it? Well, we need to add G code for that. Or you can call stop LED effects. We'll shut that off. What I've done is I've actually created a macro, which I'm going to add in here. Oh, within this status off, what I want to do is change this. Oops, too many copy prints, too much copy paste. So we're going to say stop LED effects, set 
nozzle, LEDs off, transmit one. So that will stop the effects that are running in the logo and also set the nozzle LEDs to off. I'm going to do one more type of effect, which I really like, which is the comet effect. I'll put in my cleaning comet. This is an effect that I run when I'm doing a nozzle scrub. So that's cleaning comet. It uses the SB LEDs. And I'll grab the rest of the configuration. So again, we're saying this layer is the comet effect. It's an additive thing. These are the colors that I use, which are just RGB in whatever strengths you want them to be. We're not auto starting frame rates 24 and status cleaning. We're going to take that out and I'm going to grab this and we'll go here and say set effect is, what did I call that? Cleaning Comet. So save and restart. And we will go back to the console. So we had status cleaning. And now we have a blue comet that chases through the logo and then down into the nozzles. And that's really all it takes. So for each one of the effects that you want to do, you define your LED effect like this, and then put the LED effect call into your status. And there are a number of different effects that you can do. Uh, the documentation is on Julian Schill's repo. Uh, I would like to thank Vinnie Cordiero and Wapping Pockard for coming up with the rainbow LED. And I'd also like to thank Julian Schill for the work that they've done in porting this library over. I hope you found this helpful. We hope to put out more videos in the future. So by all means, subscribe to the West 3D channel if you find this kind of thing interesting. And also, if you wouldn't mind hitting a like, if you found it useful, that'd be great. It just makes sure that YouTube puts it in front of more people and more people can find out how to do these projects. Thanks.